Good ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Citizen Aid, where we wrap the week's current affairs with the best political team on television from a very, very, very Auckland perspective. Warning, we're as fair and balanced as Fox News, especially tonight's show. Joining me tonight, I'm a revolving panel of bloggers and Auckland opinion shapers. She's a lecturer at the Department of Film, Television and Media Studies at the University of Auckland, one of the greatest female bloggers in New Zealand today when she bothers to blog. Digital feminist and torture film aficionado Phoebe Fletcher. And he's the only man in New Zealand who refuses to watch Star Wars because the Rebel Alliance are too left wing. He protested against Avatar for portraying the mining industry in a negative light. And he will inherit the Murray McCulley human skin suit once whatever reptilian thing inside Murray McCulley finally dies. Right wing storm blogger Cameron Slater. Welcome to you both. Coming out tonight, issue one. Mana won the by-election well beyond the 1% parroted from the mainstream media. Cam now owes me $200. What are the ramifications and how dull is the anti-MMP campaign? Issue two. Is Alistair Thompson the grand cyclops of chauvinist pigs? How alive and well is sexism in New Zealand? And we'll get our panellists' thoughts on slut walk. Issue three tonight. Far-right hate merchant Kathy Odges is standing for the ACT Party. One more extremist on their party list and ACT get banned for making overseas financial transactions. And we'll end the show on a final word. But let's kick things off with issue one. The mainstream media have been given a terrible kicking once again by miscalling another election 1% neck and neck when it was, in fact, over 7%. What are the ramifications of this win and how much of a yawn was the anti-MMP launch? Phoebe, if national win... 48% to Labour's 41% in this year's election. There's no way that would be described as a whisker. It would be called a landslide. Are the mainstream media reflecting public opinion or trying to manipulate it? Because most Pākehā media got this horribly wrong again, didn't they? Oh, I don't think it's a question of trying to manipulate it, although certainly on some people's parts, mm -hmm. okay? So people like John Key calling it a colossal waste of time shortly after a Bodney by-election. Yes. Um, but I think in terms of the mainstream media, it's uh, coming from a Pākehā interpretation of Māori politics. And in some ways, it just simply does not work because there's key concepts that are being overlooked. So, for example, in Tariana Turia, attacked uh, Solomon Tippany, that would have been viewed as, uh, you know, as much of a kind of breach of po protocol in that region as some of Harawera's outbursts. So I think um, in a certain sense there's a misunderstanding of, uh, the, you know, the way that the Māori seats are mm. going to work this election, mm. certainly. You were quite damning on to Mickey about the, 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 the media and their interpretation of it. What do you think they need to do to lift their game? Oh, I think probably start watching shows like Native Affairs and actually talking to Māori politicians a little bit more. Mm. I think they also need to understand too that there's a few key principles that come into play when you're talking about Māori politics, things like kotahitanga, um, that you need to understand that part of uh, Māori values are reciprocity and that there is a variety of viewpoints in the way that you might deal with colonisation. I mean, we only need to look back to, you know, the fiscal envelope to uh. see that there, um, you know, are, you know, quite predictably different reactions about how you deal with this particular kind of situation. I think the Māori Party and the way that they've worked with National was one and I think, um, you know, not to be too damning on the Māori Party because I think, you know, they have been born out of the foreshore and seabed bill mm -hmm. um, in terms of if you look at the way that Māori interact with mainstream parties, you know, Labour sort of tend to have this policy yeah, where the policy, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, policy stance yeah, where yeah. nothing moves. Yeah. Um, you know, literally it's maintaining the status quo and, you know, they might drop unemployment for Māori but nothing really changes. Whereas National tend to rise unemployment for Māori but because, you know, there's, a, I guess, a philosophical basis where they quite would like to legislate the Māori seats out of existence at some point. <laughs> um, you know, they're wanting well, to do to deals. Um, to Cam, you get Cam, things like the wānanga or kaihanga reo Cam, and so on. Cam, is your good, 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 good friend and sugar daddy, David Farrar, getting nervous pokes in the ribs by his National Party masters over the methodology of his cheap brain fart telephone polls that have failed to predict in a recession once again, yet keep telling them that they have over 60% support. Is he getting any pressure? Um, to my knowledge, um, David didn't do any polling in, um, in Titai Tokarau. The National Party had zero interest in what was happening. Same there. methodology at work, though, the telephone polls. Is, is he getting well, any, 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 you, any you nervous You go on and polls? on about That's telephone right, polls, but what's your solution for yep. polling, Bomber? Uh, deliberative polls. 
academically, they show they're much, much, much closer. Deliberative polls. That's correct. Yeah, look it up. Look it up. You'll find out. Is David's much vaunted position as National Party Sounds soothsayer like up for grabs for you to rip from him so that you can finally be the oracle of the right? Oh, well, I'm quite happy for David to be perceived as the oracle of the mm. right, and I'll just lurk in the background That's in the right. shadows. And, and make it happen. And, and actually, and, be and the actually power. make it happen. Yep. And I, I don't need the public accolades um, like, that, that like David, David does. does. That's yeah. correct. So I'm happy to just lurk in the background mm. there and, uh, and just manipulate. But he keeps getting it wrong, doesn't he? Well, he doesn't have a pit of darkness. That's the problem. Uh. <laughs> you need to, if you want to be involved in politics, you need to have a pit of darkness. It's quite, you know, quite <laughs> And you do that perfectly. Phoebe. Cam will try and downplay the importance of this one. But mana is the first narrative to the left on how Key gets defeated, defeated in the election. And it means a Māori Party meltdown, doesn't it? I don't think it does Complete necessarily rubbish. mean a Māori Party meltdown. Now, I think this is something that perhaps Phil Goff is overplaying. I do think Shane Jones has a strong chance in Tamaki Makoto. Yep, yep, but I don't yep. know if this is going to be replicated across the rest of the Māori seat. I think that, um, you know, in terms of Labour's relationship with Māori, that has often been problematic. They do have the support of Ratana, mm. um, the Ratana Bizarrely. movement, but that has begun to split because we've seen Northern Ratana go with Hone. Go with Hone. So, um, so I, th I think that, you know, while Calvin Davis retained more of his supporters for this election, yep. I mean, you've got to remember that Calvin Davis is an incredibly popular guy up north yep. as well, yep. too. A successful um, school that, teacher, it's not you know, any of those. The special votes haven't been counted yet, and I think that Hone has an appeal to the youth, mm -hmm. uh, young Māori, and I think that there may be, you know, more votes there in terms of special votes. We may have a kind of Green Party situation yep. going down there. I think that, you know, in terms of if you look at the kind of split between the electorate vote and the party vote, um, you know, in quite a few of the Māori seats, they went straight to the Māori party, showing yeah. that there, you know, which is indicative that there is a strong desire within Māori culture to see Māori politicians in there that are perhaps not a Labour-like version of Māori. If you look at uh, the party vote, mm. um, you know, Labour were outstripping them 10 to 20%. Right. So it That's shows right. that Māori are tactical voters yep. and uh, they're being, being very careful no, about this election. it shows that they're conditioned and to vote for losers. Well, no, no, but hold I on. They have, but they have shown in the past those electorate seats have thrown a real I mean, they can come in behind what someone has and Labor can pull their support away. What has Labour ever done for Maori? Name one thing they've ever done for Maori. Well, I'm, I'm not even a fan of uh, Labour's record. Well, My question go. is but to why you. why do Maori Des, continually despite, despite, give their party well, votes yep, to a party right. that never delivers anything despite for them? Because the I think they, they end up on the, the end of National's economic tinkering. You yeah, know, yeah, they are the people yeah, that got the most unemployment. And there's been a long-standing relationship since 1929, of Sounds course, like started a whole by George Cam, Cam despite, despite the Labour Party machine, despite the Māori Party machine, machine despite machine David Farrar's bias, despite Duncan Garner's bias, despite Guyan calling it for Kelvin, or despite the backing of John Key, despite your predictions, despite the attacks by Russell Norman, and despite Russell Brown's Osama Bin Laden smear, Hone and Mana, one, have those in the political media bubble missed the level of genuine anger at the bottom of the heap? No, I don't think they have, but I don't think they care either. Labour deeply cares. They need to win the Maori seats. They, they've always uh, looked on it as a minimum of four seats for Labour from the get-go, mm. meaning that anybody else is always starting four behind. Mm. That's one of the inherent rorts um, that, that we've inherited from first past the post and brought back into, into MMP. It, the Royal Commission recommended we remove Maori seats because MMP was going to reward diversity, and it has, uh, there's more Maori elected into Parliament now, outside of the Maori electorates. The argument for retaining those, which was always a temporary measure based on the fact that you could only vote if you owned land, um, the, the basic premise of that doesn't exist anymore. A and I don't think there's a valid argument to retain them, other than Labour wants to have four, you know, four to five uh, head start on anybody else. Question to both of you. Wasn't the anti-MMP launch dull? And as Herald Chief Political want, Reporter fireworks? John Armstrong pointed out, without even putting up an alternative, they lack any credibility, don't why they? Have, why should they put up an alternative? We've got a referendum that's saying you can either choose MMP mm -hmm. as it is, great system. warts and all, yep, great right? system. Yep. Um, or you can have no, vote for, for or you can MMP, vote for change. MMP. You can vote for change. The no, MMP. no, it's a vote for change, the and then MMP. choose. Shut up, bomber. Yep. You can choose four no. other options. What John Armstrong's trying to do is say, choose one, choose one, choose one. There's four options before the voters. Why should a group of people who have decided to have a voice against the long march of the pro-MMP lobby, mm. 
why should they choose one? It's up it, to the it's, voters. That's it, why it's, we're having a it's, referendum. It's, it's, it's a good strategy, isn't it? By not actually putting up the one that you would prefer, it allows you to just keep shadow boxing against the MNP, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think the one that they do prefer is pretty obvious. I mean, John Key has, has said so as well. It's a supplementary mm. member, John which, Key's not which is less for the proportion change. and representation right, than right. MMP. Yeah. And I think we're seeing, you know, in terms of uh, Labour, of course, they're going for MMP. But even with Goff, we're seeing, you know, uh, moves to to rejig that um, the, the threshold a, the rule for The referendum's not about seats, rejigging. Which I think... Um, the referendum's not about rejigging. Yeah, and but the Electoral Commission, that is one of the issues that they need to look mm. at. So mm. if, you, if you actually it's look at late. their website, they've got about six issues that have to come under investigation by the Electoral yeah, Commission. I think referendum. what we're seeing in this election is that, you know, Labour are highlighting ACT, um, you know, through winning electorate seats and bringing but, more people but in. Jim but Anderson. I think that they're actually, um, <laughs> you know, quite a lot more worried about people like Mana. That's right. Yeah. Uh, question to both of you. Seeing as the official campaign is so dull... Does that mean Cam's black ops team of Farrar and Simon Lusk will be planning online hate crime to poison the MMP well? What are you going to be doing? Well, I'm not involved in the vote for change mm. campaign. No, 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 the black ops one. But so the Sunday Star Times out. Well, they haven't outed anything. Anthony mm. Hubbard's busily running around ringing a whole lot of people at the moment trying mm. to scare up this big conspiracy. Mm. Mm. Do, th this is the thing that I find... Uh, very concerning in New Zealand Tell politics is that people like yourself, mm. Anthony Hubbard, the screamers of the pro, in the awful, pro MMP, awful people. don't want to debate. Uh. They want to demonise and, and mm. ridicule people's mm -hmm. um, personal backgrounds yep. rather than debate the actual issues. We have a referendum we that's do. saying, yes. here's four other options, discuss, here's and you're way, saying pick one. Here's a way of shutting down the popular, <laughs> the popular discussion and allow the elite to win, I understand. Um, how do they poison MMP well? Oh, I, I mean, I think this is going to go back to the same issue as the 1993 referendum, which is that New Zealanders, you know, by and large, you know, didn't understand MMP or the voting system very well. I think it's going to be a challenge in terms of educating they're, people they're in do. terms of the options. And I also think, you know, that um, there's kind of the popular notion that we need less MP, MPs and also that we le need less minority parties, um, you know, having a say in government. So I think that's going to impact on the MMP. P campaign. I do think, you know, personally I believe that MMP is the most proportional government and um, I think that in terms of creating a kind of diverse uh, parliamentary setting that it's actually a good thing to have these alternatives. Got to move on. Issue, issue, issue on two, issue two. Somehow Alistair Thompson has managed to keep his job at the EMA despite his appallingly sexist comments, despite his bullying of a journalist and despite his lewd jokes at an official function to Washington, to the, to the, to the President of the Council of Trade Unions. Uh, BB, where to, where to begin? begin? Where to begin? Hasn't the EMA let themselves down by not sacking, sacking this sexist dinosaur? Is it any wonder why women earn less when the advisor to the boss believes these things? Hmm, I think he would have very good lawyers. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I think that, you know, watching that interview with Alistair Thompson, there's some, you know, debate over whether he got sprung by Mahinarangi Forbes. I think, the you know, in terms of being a CEO, no, no, you. if you watch a 25-minute version, uh, version yep, yep. It, it is, you know, like Alistair Thompson gets on camera first of all, he's like, what does my hair look like? Do I have to apologise again? I'll apologise on camera how if I have to. How many um, other people you know, have, this done, is, that? have it's, done that too? It's his position, he's CEO of the EMA. Mm. Um, to say that, you know, the, the gender pay gap is attributable to women having menstruation, is Your just thoughts. absolutely shocking. And, you know, I think Jenny Shipley, it's not often I support her, but Agreed. I absolutely Agreed. applaud her absolutely. in this situation that why are we having this debate that, um, you know, it's essentially dinosaur. Mm. This is something that we were discussing 25 years ago. And, you know, we've got a problem here in that we do have an Equal Pay Act with Catherine Delahunty saying, you know, part of the problem in New Zealand is that we start dredging up all this research as to why women shouldn't get paid equally. Mm. If you look back to the mid-90s, that pay gap was about 18%. So there is proof that we can drop that. Right. We've had National abolish the Pay Equity Commission. Yep. Um, and, you know, these are, are serious issues. And to, to have someone like Alistair Thompson talk about that in an interview shows that there is a kind of degree of casual sexism. And if, you know, that 12% pay gap is not enough evidence, then you need to look at the number of women CEOs. Yeah, that's you know, right. Where that's it's right. only 17% right. in the public, se uh, public sector. Yep. And if you look at the private sector, the top 100 companies yep. in the New Zealand Exchange, wine, 7%. Wine, wine. This, okay, what are you going to do about how you going to legislate to fix that? Our lewd 
jokes to the president of the CTU at an official function in Washington about having sex with the Prime Minister acceptable? What does the Cameron Slater rules on politics say about structural patriarchy, hegemonic, cultural control sexism? I don't even know what the, your sentence is. Of course you said. don't. It's of course total you don't. bollocks. Yeah. Obviously written by an academic, mm, not you. Mm. Um, Helen Kelly's is, are his jokes hang, acceptable hang on a second. It, It's acceptable for Helen Kelly to be a hobbit hater but it's not acceptable for Alistair Thompson to tell a few lewd jokes. Probably not the right uh, situation to tell the jokes in, but jokes are jokes, aren't they? Aren't we being a bit precious, calling for the heads of people? And no, I don't think so. It's is that the best you've he's got? Not a you've had a week to come up with a better, of the better excuse I just than don't that. care he's about He's not a commentator. He's the head of the EMA. And I tell you what, I've spoken to a lot of female businesswomen who are outraged, absolutely outraged by this, and this is because, um, you know, the, well, the treatment of women outraged, in the workplace as you know, casual sexism is something that women encounter on a daily basis. It's something that impacts on our ability to rise up through the rungs in workplaces, and it's something that impacts on our pay. And so for women, this is something that we hold very dear, it. and I think the EMA, the board, need to take a strong Phoebe, directive in this isn't the message from Alistair that women need to accept being second-class citizens in their own country with 12% less pay because they have periods and children? Isn't it just biology, Phoebe? No, I don't think you can make this kind of biological determinism argument, particularly if you're talking about menstruation, not all women, you know, experience, you know, menstruation pain and stuff like that to the same degree. I mean, you know, if you look at feminist blog sites like Jezebel and so on, there are, you know, debates over menstruation. You certainly saw um, the endometriosis CEO saying, you know, in one way this is raising awareness, but should we be paid less? No. The one study that the but media have you? managed to trawl up this morning from Italy, where they said that it explained 11.9% of the gender pay gap, they said that the only measure for productivity in the way that they actually conducted the survey was uh, whether people were sick off work. Now, there is additional research that shows that women outperform men if they get to CEO level. Mm -hmm. There is also additional research that shows that in addition to the 30% unpaid work that women do, more than it? men, that they actually it? work longer hours at work. Now, and Pam, balance, in terms of this thing overnight thing, I think you're ignoring the fact that women have been treated as second class citizens for centuries. Mm. Only 50 years ago in New Zealand, we were economically dependent on men. We have fought very long and hard to have, you know, the kind of roles that we do in the workplace. You know, to women my grandmother's age, th what we have today would have been simply unimaginable. Well, my, and I hate to see this regression. Pam, the interview with TV3 was the ultimate downfall, though, wasn't it? He kept digging himself deeper and deeper and deeper. If you were advising Which Alistair, interview are you talking about? The five minutes they no, showed no, no, on no, the no, no, the or full the full one they only put online? Yeah, yeah, that's right. right? What would you very advise? Dis what very would you, dishonest. What um, would you advise me? Oh, come on. You know as Even well as Brian I do, Edwards someone like says that it's dishonest. would be yeah, a little smarter, Yeah, but Brian Edwards is running a media company. It's someone that woman Judy, um, yeah, you know, yeah, that, that yeah, yeah. tend to blog yeah, about what, people whose cases they've what what advice, advice, what advice, in the pay of the Labour what, Party. What, what advice would you give Alistair Thompson right now? Oh, the same advice I put on my blog. When you're in a hole, stop digging, unless you're digging a grave, in which case make it real deep. Well, I mean, it's like right. even Kate just Kate said, STFU, you know, yeah. like... Um, exactly. Question, question to both of you. Women are fighting for the bare right just to drive in Saudi Arabia. Is New Zealand a sexist country? I think New Zealand is a sexist country, hands down. There are a lot I of things I love about this country, but you only need to look at, you know, the statistics on abuse and um, violence yeah. and so on. Yeah. Um, to, to look, you know, I, I think it's um, ridiculous to assume that overnight by legislating you can remove centuries right. of discrimination. Well, we've got legislation, you, you we've got legislation against sexual assault and, 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 um, and, and normal assault, and it hasn't stopped that, has it? So legislating to fix it I think things bollocks. move over time, Cameron. You cannot That's look right. at the last 50 years and argue that the position of woman is not different than it was 50 oh, years in the, ago. In the, 70s, in, the 70s, in the 70s, it was legal to rape your spouse and you couldn't I'm get done for, for rape. Well, I'm not for saying crime. that's right. Well, you know, right. it's like only late 1960s right. that women get the right to, to work after 11pm or a proper DP. Okay, okay, I question, like question that, Harry, your question, video. Question to both of you. Thoughts on the slut walk held last week in Auckland? Empowering or not? Cam? Well, I just don't get the point of it, really. I mean, I understand the original slut walk. And the and the response to a, what a police officer said, mm. I get that, yep, yep. right? I, I really do. But the the campaign of slut walks around the world has morphed from that one, you know, drawing attention it to something else completely entirely different. Right? It's, it's, it's an but, 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 but I don't, I think it's I don't really care. The, the more near naked women that walk walk the streets, you know. Um, 
It just suits me. I don't mind. I'm gonna cut you off here if you're unsafe. No, I thought. What's, what's <laughs> um? What's what's what's? Oh, it is an empowerment. Though, isn't it? Oh, it, it is an empowerment. Have a problem with us in New Zealand. We've only got to look at two people: Louise Nichols and Kristen Dunn Powell, to yep. see the way that they were trawled through the media yeah. and the way that sexual yeah. assaults in New Zealand quite often get linked to what people were wearing. I've heard personally many incidents yeah, of people complaining to police and you know not actually getting treated that well. Um, so I think this is a huge issue for women is that we should be able to wear what we want regardless of what it is, regardless of whether it's a burqa Amen. even, Amen. you know, it's yeah, a woman's look, Phoebe, choice the fact is as if to I what walked she down wears. Queen Street in a thong, I'd get assaulted too. I who wins, know. who loses by LSD remaining in the EMA? Who wins, who loses? Who wins, who loses? Ah, oh, oh, I think the EMA has got to take a stronger stance, you know. In, in this particular situation, he is a CEO. He does come, his job comes towards responsibility. I think that they are losing by dragging it out this, so long. I mean, I think the other issue here is too, is whether Alistair Thompson is capable of handling his brand, and I don't think he handled that interview that well. Uh, who wins, who loses by Alistair staying? Well, Alistair's a dick. I've always thought he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. He gets on the radio all the time going, yeah, Alistair Thompson from it. Basically, he's been trying to run a campaign to be be an act MP, and, yes, yes, and he's that's and right, he, that's right. And, and it was a it was a, a not very well kept secret that he was going to do that yeah. this year. Well, I think his election campaign. Well, over. I have to kind of interject but, here very quickly and say that I do feel very sorry for his female employees, where he was discussing people's oh, periods in the workplace, yeah, yeah, which seemed to me yeah, completely yeah, yeah. inappropriate. Well, the only person that he's um, actually yeah. directly hired is actually a postmenopausal woman, so that probably says something. Thank you, panel. Coming up, is far-right blogger and ACT Party candidate Kathy Odgers fit to run for politics? Citizen A is back after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Citizen A. We're reviewing the week with blogger Phoebe Fletcher and that awful Cameron Slater. Issue three tonight, far-right hate merchant Kathy Odgers is standing for the ACT Party. One more extremist in their pa on their party list and ACT get banned from making overseas financial transactions. Let's get straight into this. Cam, Kathy Odgers, I put to you straight, Kathy Odgers is not fit to be a politician when she articulates such Benny-bashing hatreds towards beneficiaries by describing them as, and I quote, the pathetic heaving underclass and advocate sterilization bonus programs to stop them breeding. Her choice of words, breeding. Your thoughts? Oh, I think those are, it might be your opinion that she's unfit to be um, a candidate for a, for a political party, but um, it's not your call to make. That's the media's call to challenge candidates, well, surely. Well, you're hardly media bomber. I mean, if five people are watching this show today, would hardly Well, there are ten when you're be... on. There are ten when you're exactly. on. Exactly. That's, 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 that's a weak argument. Get back to the issue. Is she fit to be a candidate? When, when she says things She's like that... She's absolutely fit to be a candidate. If Honi Harawira is fit to be a candidate after calling the entire Pakeha New Zealand white, white mofos, mofos... He actually used a worse word Yeah, that's that. right. That's right. Who's steal and rape... That's, that's exactly. more historical fact oh, no, that's than, all than right, racism. Is it? No, that's all right. It is racism. But attacking... But attacking Racist attacking, and you know it. attacking the, the, the use of the word the pathetic heaving underclass. That's not acceptable but language. There is, is a it? pathetic heaving underclass. Now you might not see it in living in your apartment in the bottom of town. Well and, aware and, of and the catch, beneficiary and catching, lives, and but catching, I don't describe them as the breeding heavy, heaving underclass. Do well, I? Well, why are you too scared to? Well, I mean, because it's incredibly hateful. That's why. It's not hateful. It, it is, is hateful. a hateful. pathetic. It is hateful. It is a pathetic heaving underclass. It is out there, and you need to understand it that it is there instead of having your. It's incredibly nice patronising. Okay. Okay, it okay. might okay. be, um, but it's true. Phoebe, Phoebe, Kathy claims that she could woo female voters back to acts and get them to stand. No, she didn't. How many woman hating female voters are there? Kathy's articulation of beneficiaries as the pathetic heaving underclass will appeal to whom? 
five percent wow. of the population. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the party with Don Brash, so you know, like it may appeal yeah. to a few people. Is that language um, hateful? I mean, I think we we're talking about this before. I think she was more interested in getting rid of Heather Roy, wasn't That's she? Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, mission this accomplished. Is, yeah, which, which was mission accomplished. Um, I mean, you know, that is. It is one of those things. I mean, they haven't actually announced that she's a candidate exactly. yet. She's, she's running. She's, she's running. Yeah, sure. And it's up yep. to the ACT mm. Party and their pro democratic processes to choose to sit, to decide, not Bomber Bradbury ranting I on th a blog. I mean, that I has think five she's readers. acerbic. That I think that exactly. what what um, what you know translates really well on her blog mm. um, might not translate have so we well become, as, a as a politician. Have we become right. so sucky in New right. yeah. Have we become so sucky in New Zealand politics that we can't handle a certain when you're politics? describing it's the pathetic. poor in those terms no, and advocating sterilisation programs to the Chris Christie about breeding? Of I think that is pretty disgusting. No. Can you rule do, number no, sixty-seven thousand eight hundred and forty-five, subsection two, part B of the Cameron Slater Rules of Politics states. Don't let friendship blind you. It's right at the end because he doesn't have many friends. Aren't you allowing your friendship of Kathy to blind your role as a critic to vet who candidates he? Take out the gross sexualisation of men, the drinking, the partying, the corporate lawyer lifestyle. You still can't escape the extreme things hey, she on, says the about taking. the weakest and poorest in New Zealand society. Oh, hey, and you miss drug taking as well. I have no idea of that. Well, you obviously haven't read her blog widely then. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's coming from you. Um, it's not up to up to me or you or anybody else other than the ACT Party and then mm -hmm. the voters of New Zealand to decide whether she's suitable to be a candidate or not. Don't you understand this? I mean, I guess from the coming media from the far is supposed left, to hold the powerful to account. We've already established she's not part of the media. And, and she should be held account. If this is the best you've got as a comeback actor and in a lot of trouble, aren't they? No, I'm glad you've acknowledged that Cathy is powerful. You, you're doing you're doing to Kathy Hodges what Phil did to, for, for Darren, aren't no, you? No. Being loyal, blindly loyal. No, no, there's a big difference. Her. There's a big difference. Mm. Friends are friends through thick and thin, uh -huh. no matter what. Yep. Even you'd if they're wrong. You would have, even, even if, if they're, they're wrong. Even if, even wrong if they're wrong. I'm not saying they're hateful. Yep. Yep. Even if they're wrong, yep. you're still a friend to them. That's what good. Phil Goff did to Darren loyal. Hughes loyal. could hardly be called friendship. He, <laughs> cut him, he cut him loose and probably hasn't spoken to him since. Phoebe, is there a bizarre sexism at work here? If it had been a man advocating sterilisation bonus programmes and describing beneficiaries as the pathetic, heaving underclass, the mainstream media would be having a field day with these quotes, wouldn't they? I think they are having a field day with the quotes, actually, personally. They're laughing at Bomber. I, th I think, no, I don't think that they're laughing at Bomber. I think that, you know, it's going to be to, to wait until it's official. But I think that there's yeah. so much there on her blog that she's going to dig a whole fan. No, no, she's yeah. not. Yeah. Who so wins you're and not who understanding. You're not understanding. Who wins yeah. and who loses by having an extremist like Kathy Hodges in the political race? Your thoughts? Uh, who wins, who loses? For the same reason that uh, I always win when Trevor Mallard talks about me, Kathy yep. Hodges is always winning when you're talking about her. Wow, well, okay. wow. I'm like, a, I'm like Cameron Slater. Uh, who wins and loses by having an extremist like wish. Kathy Hodges in the political race? Well, I think there's always going to be extremists in the political race, and it's a result of, you know, democracy, mm. I guess. Exactly. And, um, um, Ona's an extremist, and we welcome him, don't we? I don't Bomber. think he is an extremist. No, he's yeah. not an extremist. Anyone no, who not, calls no, people not. white man is, is extreme. Yeah, I think that's an ex extreme comment, but I think, you know... Um, yeah, there we go. Kathy, Kathy Hodges calling for sterilisation of the poor. She did it. It's exactly she said, let's disgusting. pay people she, yeah, not to breathe. That's right. That's a different. Bonus, sterilisation pay bonus. She actually breathe. said yes. in yeah, the yeah. sentence let's, before let's that sterilisation let, won't work. Let, let's wrap the show with last word. Phoebe, your last word this week is? Uh, my last word is that it is the anniversary of independ independence for the Democratic Republic of Congo today. Yes. Oh, and wonderful. And I just wanted to draw attention to um, a country that's quite often associated with rape and child soldiers um, to draw attention to some of the processes that are going on in terms of the way that we're getting their resources. They have been 5.4 million people that have died in their war. They have $24 trillion worth of resources, yet they have the second lowest GDP mm. um, in the world. And basically, a lot of the fighting is being fueled by a mineral called coltan, which mm. is in every cell phone and computer. And I would think that, you know, as New Zealanders that are carrying around this technology, we need to have an awareness of where our resources come from and ensure that we have processes that are there for fair trade. And I think that ethical investment is a huge issue, you know. Cam, your final word this week is? My, my final word is uh, to talk about the F MMP referendum. Mm -hmm. We've got a referendum. It's been set up to have a discussion. Uh, I find it incredibly sad that the people who desperately support MMP because it's supposed to be more democratic and mm. fairer and everything else simply don't want to have a debate. 
We've seen endless numbers of blog posts from, from the, the left-wing supporters um, of MMP who are basically trying to shut down the debate by shouting and screaming about the personalities that are involved rather than actually debating the merits of various systems. And that's a sad indictment on MMP and it's a sad indictment on them that they can't debate the issues. Need a hug? I don't need a hug. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you, Cam. Ladies and gentlemen, to my final word. News of the dirty, filthy tobacco industry are taking Australia to court over new anti-smoking measures should signal a loud warning shot to all New Zealanders. The dirty, filthy tobacco industry are able to challenge Australia because of free trade deals cut behind closed doors that ensure corporate profit trumps public welfare. The exact same free trade deal is being cut currently by John Key with America that will allow every American corporation to take New Zealand to an overseas tribunal we have no power over if New Zealand does anything that frustrates their corporate takeover of our economic sovereignty. Key promise bil promises billions from this free trade deal, the way Jerry Brownlee promised billions for mining conservation land. Yet WikiLeaks released emails showing our trade negotiator secretly complaining with the American negotiator that New Zealand got nothing in this deal and that conning New Zealanders would be the most difficult part of the process. Our political leaders should be cutting deals for the benefit of New Zealanders. They shouldn't be cutting deals for the benefit of America or America's corporate interests. And they sure as hell shouldn't be cutting deals that helps the dirty, filthy tobacco industry. If you like tonight's show, please join our Facebook, uh, a Citizen A Facebook site and connect with other like-minded news citizens and follow me on my Citizen Bomber Twitter and Facebook page. Thanks for watching, Fano. Good night, Ahira. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.